Welcome to my desert home. Yep. So, uh, please subscribe and and click that uh, that bell looking icon for notifications. And um, always check the description below the video because then you might get a little bit more information about the clips that I put in there and also any any mistakes I made in the Bible study I'll try to correct them there okay thank you for watching hey what are you guys doing well I came in here to uh mainly just to take that heater down don't need to run it all day it's like in, been getting down below freezing <laughs> I came in and then I stepped in and went turned around and closed the door and one of them hens made a dash for the door I was able to stop her before she got out but uh, it's like I say these chickens are looking for a way out of here and the cats are looking for a way to get in <laughs> which uh, I had a, had a little kitten that was trapped in the tin overnight. Anyhow, I got to take this thing down. I'll tell you about the kitten later. I got to go fix the hole in the tent where they've been getting in. I finally found it. Well, this morning when I was taking care of the critters, I, uh, I had found this hole yesterday, but this morning I chased all those other cats out yesterday. But this morning I found, I found a little kitten in here, and you can see that it's got a screen in front of it. So somehow they've been coming through there, probably pushing from under the screen somehow, because this screen is pretty much attached to the walls. That little tiny kitten with the white boots, Caligula, and I tell you, I heard it mewing, and I looked all around it, and then it, and when I finally found it, it, it had a big chase. It kept going. In fact, it even got underneath this one time, and that was terrible, terrible trying to get it out of here. Anyhow, I finally got it out. Now I'm going to fix the hole in the wall. Um, okay. Here's my, here's my white flex seal. But, uh, and I do have, I do have a wide, a wide roll of the tape. But I got a little bit of the three inch tape left. And I'm going to use the three inch uh, tape and and this uh, clear flex seal and then after all that dries in a couple of days I'll coat it with the white stuff but yesterday uh, that might even be not enough tape I might have to use that big stuff but I put all this stuff in front of the hole yeah I might have to get out the big tape. Oh, what a duster. It doesn't like to seal over dirt. <laughs> I think I might have enough there. Anyhow, look at all this stuff. All these different holes. Even up there in the corner of the roof I've had to fix. I think this probably gets more more wind action on this this back here than the front or even the sides okay well I'm gonna see what I can do hopefully I can get this with just that little bit of tape I don't have any more than three inch wide okay well I got it on Oh, missed a little bit right there. Uh, okay, I'm going to have to let this dry 
and then try to put in the patch over it with the bigger stuff. It, uh, it never works like you want it to. I tell you, <clears throat> I've tried using this flex seal tape on many other things. But this is the only thing I seem to be able to make it work for. And even then I have to use that spray stuff on the edges. As you can see, it didn't really heal right there either. Heal. <laughs> it didn't really take right there. Wobbly. You're the only cat that, that even acts like it likes me. And even you try to run sometimes. Huh? Well, there it is. I put that uh, piece of wood and that brick there to hold it tight. But even then you can see it's not working all that great. Uh, I, I should have cut that eight, eight inch wide uh, piece a little longer. And uh, tomorrow maybe I'll, if there's no wind I'll, I'll spray it with the white flex seal. As you can see this stuff never really dries flat but this stuff like this stuff here hey at least it's keeping the, the wind and rain out such as it is Okay, you saw me fix that the other day. And, uh, but today, I walked in here and I noticed a big old hole up there. Anyhow, <laughs> I had to, uh, I had to cut out a big piece of canvas and glue it on top with, uh, Henry's roof cement, which is a kind of a rubberized cement. It's black. I know they got a white one, but I didn't have any white one. I had a can of black stuff. Anyhow, I'm going to go up there maybe tomorrow and, and spray it with the white flex seal. And uh, the thing is, you see how this is bunched up? I figure that big white Siamese cap must have come through there jumped onto this canvas, this ceiling here I got and uh, bunched it up over there but up where I found him was he was up under here and I was trying to get him out, get him out and I had to wind up reaching up there and uh, I really didn't want to do that because these cats can really scratch you up good they don't like to be picked up. Only a couple of them do. Anyhow, I'm uh, I'm gonna have to uh, do some more work on that tomorrow. Maybe duct tape it on the inside here. Hey, get out from there! Where's a rock? I'm gonna find me a rock to throw in that bum. No. Oh. Oh, missed him. Darn him. Get out! Well, anyhow. He's gonna get out. Get out! I'm going up the ladder here. Let's see what he does. Ooh. Get down! Get! You bum, you! But look, see? That's what I did. Still pretty sticky. Hey, bum. Okay. Well, I... I went up there and... I sprayed it with that white flex seal and uh, I asked her to come out and not to hold the ladder really just to make sure that if I fell off I'd 
that I could get some medical attention <laughs> at a good time. But you know what? Uh, yesterday I was online looking at uh, at garages, metal garages. I figure I might have enough money to pay for one. I sure hate to pay that big chunk, about $10,000 or so, but it would be worth it. Get rid of this tent, put a garage right here. I don't know what I'd do with that wooden floor, though. Well, I, I just would call it a workshop. The only thing I'd keep in the garage is probably a motorcycle. And that wooden floor is a lot bigger than the tent. So, anyhow, I've been looking, was looking at the rain flies and a, a good tarp for, for a green fly that is really thick. It's like almost 200 bucks. More, actually, with the shipping. All righty. Back when the world was a very different place. How does it resonate? I mean, tell me a little bit more. Okay. I want you to watch this movie on YouTube. Look it up. Bruce, space trucker. That's how we fixed his, the meteorite holes. <laughs> okay. Here's another stumbling and bumbling, boring Bible study. At least that's what I think they are because most of the people, the very few people who watch my videos anyhow, tell me that uh, they don't, they don't go uh, and uh, stay in it for the, for the Bible study. And I think that's a shame because I am I am so fascinated if that's a, not even a good word for it but I am I am desirous of knowing Jesus Christ and fellowshipping with him and the only real true way that I have of knowing him is by studying the Bible and uh, when you study the Bible you might not think you see much of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament but he's in there he's all the way through there because he was the plan of God he was the logos of God and logos could also be translated as plan and uh, he's the mind of God the logos could be translated that way even and he's In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So it's very important to read the Word about the Word of God in order to get to know Him, to get to know Him. And, and as you read through this Colossians 1, the first chapter, I'm in Colossians now, just started it yesterday, and I'm going over some of the things from yesterday that I I thought of, but uh, there's some other things that I read today about uh, the knowledge of God and the wisdom of God and, and things like that, that you're only going to get through studying the Bible. It's important to study the Bible. It's a, it's it's our ruler. It's our guide stick. It's our yardstick. It it's our canon, and that's what canon means. Canon is cane, which was they would have, as we have today. We have yardsticks and rulers, and uh, this is what the Bible is. It's the yardstick. It's the ruler. It's what we need to study if we really want to know the one true God. So, Paul starts out here. I'm going to try to keep it short so I don't be boring you like I usually do. But Paul writes, he says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, in Timotheus, our brother. Now, he mentions Timotheus 
our brother. And as I said before, that he regarded Timotheus as his son in the Lord. But here he says, Timotheus, our brother. Anyhow, let's take a couple of look, a look to our two about uh, Timothy. Uh, he says, this guy, uh, Albert Barnes, says, there was a particular reason why Timothy should be associated with him in writing this epistle. He was a native of the region where the church was situated. Colossae, well, Colossi, excuse me, Colossi was close, 200 miles away, and that's a long walk. So it's not like, like uh, oh, like, like Reno's about a couple hundred miles from me, less than that really. But uh, I could drive there and back in like four hours, four or five hours to go there and back. Well, uh, they had to walk a long ways from uh, from uh, where Timothy was from to Colossi. Hey, let's see where he was from. Okay. I should have went right to the... Okay, let's go to the Bible and read it right out of the Bible. This is, uh, I think it's Paul's second journey. And he came to Derby and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there. And let's highlight that for y'all in yellow. I like the yellow. Then came he to Derby and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman which was a Jewess, and believed, but his father was a Greek. And he was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. Him would Paul have to go forth with him and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. And as they went to the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep that were ordained of the apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem. And that's an interesting thing too is because the uh, the apostles and elders at Jerusalem decided to go ahead and let Gentiles become Christians without having to be circumcised and follow all the kosher laws of the Jews. and But yet Paul took and circumcised Timothy because the, he didn't want to... Uh, stir up any kind of riotous behavior and that, and that happened throughout his journeys he would go to a place and uh, either the pagans or the Jews would get all upset about his preaching and they, they took him more than one time they stoned him one time they even left him for dead laying, and drug him outside the city and boom he wasn't dead now, a lot of people say that was miraculous. I think maybe he, they just thought he was dead and and uh, wasn't as bad off as they thought he was. But uh, he, Paul went through some stuff. And I can't blame him for circumcising Timothy. But in a way, that kind of goes against the, the, the uh, decrees that were ordained of the apostles and, and elders in Jerusalem. I said, oh, they... We can let the Gentiles come in without becoming fully Jewish and uh, circumcising and following the kosher laws. Now, anyhow, that's just kind of an interesting thing there. So, um, yeah. Uh, did apostles ever make mistakes? Yeah, I think they did. Were they totally infallible? No, I don't think they were. Is the Pope infallible, who claims to be the successor of the Apostle Peter in Rome? No, I don't think he is. Anyhow, they made mistakes. And 
Let's go back to Colossae. So here he's calling Timothy his brother instead of his son. But uh, you got to realize that when Paul went and wrote this letter, he was towards the end of his life. And Timothy is a young man when he met him, probably a teenager, was now uh, probably up in his middle age years. Because Paul, they say Paul preached for 40 years. Paul was a Christian for 40 years before they executed him outside the city limits of Rome with a, by cutting his head off with a sword. But anyhow, so Timothy by this time is not the young man that Paul met, but now a middle-aged man, and he's calling him his brother. But Timothy was there with Paul in Rome, in the prison with Paul. He didn't have a charge in him like Paul did, but he stuck by and stayed with him in the prison. Of course, Paul was also so chained up to a, a soldier at the time, so they weren't worrying about Timothy trying to get him out. <laughs> but they, they let other Christians come in too, obviously, Epaphroditus and Epaphras and Tychicus. They all visited Paul in Rome bringing him uh, food and and uh, books and extra clothing and blankets or two. It's always nice when you're locked up that somebody remembers you and helps you out. Anyhow, he wrote this letter to the saints and included Timothy as, as somebody who is there right with him, his brother. To the saints, and faithful brethren in Christ, which were at Colossae. Now, Colossae, yeah, Colossae was was uh, was west of Lystra, which is where Timothy came from. So, Paul never went to Colossae, but when he was was in Ephesus preaching. I think he spent a couple of years in, in Ephesus preaching. He had sent people to Colossae. And, uh, of course, later on he he went to, uh, he included a stop at Derby and Lystra, which is where he met Timothy. But anyhow, the Colossian church was familiar with Timothy, and so he included him there. And he says... Here's his formal. Oh, let let let's say, let's go back and look at these saints and faithful brethren in Christ. Now the saints are the same thing as the faithful brethren. A lot of people look at that and say, oh, he's talking to two different groups, but no, it's the same group. But anyhow, he goes into the formal apostolic greeting where he says. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when I was listening to the uh, introduction to Colossians by uh, J. Vernon McGee, J. Vernon McGee said that, and the Lord Jesus Christ is not included in some of the older manuscripts. But uh, he said the reason why that was is that Paul was having a little controversy with the people who, who were called Gnostics. And of course Gnostics means means uh, knowledge and, and they, the people thought they knew everything. But one of the things that the Gnostics believed, one of the groups of Gnostics, believed that the Lord Jesus Christ was a created being. But Jesus Christ was not a created being. The, the, uh, the, yes, the body here that he inhabited was created, but, but there was a miraculous birth. The Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary, and the Lord Jesus Christ was conceived. So, Jesus Christ was not just a created being 
that you had to go through on the way to get to the Father. Jesus Christ was God manifest in the flesh. The fullness of the Godhead dwells in Jesus Christ. And we're going to see that as we study through Colossians. So, if you want to get to God the Father, talk to the Lord Jesus Christ, because in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. So Jesus Christ is God. So talk to Him, because He is the Word of God. He is the Logos of God. He, was, he is the plan of God. He's the mind of God. He is God. So, the Lord Jesus Christ told us to love one another. He told us to love our enemies. And Paul, Paul advises us to temper our love with judgment. You gotta feed some people with a long handled spoon. You gotta be careful. They might bite your fingers if you get too close. So, but you still gotta feed them. And what do you gotta feed them? You gotta feed them the word of God. The meat and the milk. The milk first and then the meat. And uh, I just pray that, uh, that you all will stick to the end of the Bible studies. I might not be the best teacher in the world. I might not be the most knowledgeable uh, Christian. But I'm trying to dig in there. And I pray that you will too. So thank you for watching. God bless you.